Hi, I'm Jopra and I work at Wolfram and I'm going to present uh, computational taxonomy in biology. It's, um, it's one of my hobbies to identify a species. So I'm going to use Wolfram language to identify several species with images, with audios, and also to uh, show the power, the, the power of the Wolfram knowledge base. So my name is Jofra. Um, I'm, my background is in physics, but I'm going to talk about biology today. Uh, since, a kid, since I was a kid, uh, I really like it to, to explore the outside world and look for fossils, species. And now, uh, since last year, I started to, to identify a species using the one app called iNaturalist. So I became interested in pulling all that data that I was collecting from the outside world into Wolfram language. So I'm going to try to um, give a talk on, on, on taxonomy, even if I'm not an expert, an expert, and give you some hints on what is possible with the Wolfram language and biodiversity data. So yeah, here's uh, the definition of uh, taxonomy, basically is that the way uh, biologists have classified a biological organism. And just I would give you some brief story on it. I think it's too small to see it here. This timeline plot is, uh, Aristotle was one of the founders on, on, on the systems to classify uh, organisms. And one of his students was more focused on plants. And then there was like a gray area uh, on, on the middle age. And finally, the, the kind of the father of, of the modern taxonomy is uh, the Swedish uh, Carolus Linnaeus. I, I don't know if I, uh, I pronounced correctly because he was, uh, he's a, it's a Swedish na name. Right? And I think I will maybe give you, uh, I don't know if how many of you did know that there was like one beetle, one back called uh, Cusciolina Mathematica. So probably it's the, the first historically discovered by Harold at uh, 1875. <laughs> and this is the, the taxonomograph of, of the family. And one can ob obtain that already using the, the built-in uh, knowledge from um, yeah, a species in both from language. I think that's for um, just the, the start of the, of, of the theory. And, and here I'm just going to keep the topic of uh, Halloween again and show what's uh, possible on, on, on taxonomy of pumpkins with the Wolfram language. And yeah, there's like a, a lot of ways of visualizing the taxonomy. Um, of, of the different species of uh, pumpkins, at least the, the ones in, in the US. And there is even possible to uh, get the data from the, the USDA and, and have such like a, a cool map on the different um, pumpkin species that you can find in, in the US. Since like a time ago, I, I was submitting the, my first function in the Wolfram function repository. It's called a taxo taxonomic nearest. And here one can explore and learn a, a bit more about taxonomy. For example, I did not know that uh, the cu a, a cucumber and a watermelon is closer to a pumpkin than a, an eggplant. And that's uh, from last year, uh, internal uh, one-liner competition. And basically, I'm creating an image collage of the species, uh, endangered species around the, the globe. And it's kind of really amazing that with the Wolfram language, you can compact all that uh, information in, in just one line. And then you can do also things like uh, give me all the mammals that weighed more than 10 kilograms, and then give me a, a, 
a community graph on these animals based on the taxonomy. And, and then uh, each vertex is also uh, has a size depending on, on the size of animal, or in this case, the weight. All right. I think it's, uh, it's too heavy. I, I haven't shared the, the, the notebook yet because it's 100 something megabytes. It might crash, but uh, that's, that's what it, hopefully it's not crashing. So uh, what, what if uh, you want to include, like import some data that is not already like in the Wolfram uh, knowledge base? So uh, nowadays there are like several international uh, platforms for, uh, for species and info data, and some of them are, are related to the, to the genomics of the, of the species. Some of them are like more like the, the, the occurrences, like the, the GBIF. Uh, EOL is also having a lot of information on, on morphology and different traits of, of, a, of a species. It's the Encyclopedia of Life. And I think, uh, for example, uh, Wolfram Alpha is using uh, one, one list of uh, species from cat cat catalog of life. And nowadays there's like a kind of a big mess on all these uh, uh, list of uh, species names because uh, they have like all these kind of institutions have different uh, list and whenever one biologist is discovering a new species or changing the name of the, the taxon, it's not automatically changed on the other databases. So there's like a, so yeah, there are like many many inconsistencies, and and there are like there is a new international project called uh, Catalog of Life Plus that tries to solve this problem. I'm not going to talk about it because it's still not not, not finished, but there is like a, a GitHub link on that project. So now I will focus on on importing the data from from iNaturalist. It's the app that I have been using since last January, I think and I identified more than 800 species during that time. <laughs> and so if you haven't downloaded the app, you can download it in your phone, it's free, and make a, a user account, and you will, you will be able to then um, do some search queries. And a specify, for example, that you want information about Kuschelina Mathematica de Beetle, and see all the observations that people have done in, around, around the globe. So I think I have, there's like some back. Yeah, just to, to give a, an example of all possible properties that you can have in this, and such a data set from iNaturalist, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go through all of them, and here I'm going to just like focus on, on, on geolocation and image URLs. And I will start with uh, spiders because today is Halloween. So I think I found like around 75 spi spiders since last year around the, the planet. And this is a kind of, I call it the emoji spider because it has like a, a, smi a smiley face. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> It's an uh, orb weber spider from Dominican Republic. So it's uh, once you have uh, this data set, which maybe you can just import it like this, just to, so, to show that it's really easy to, to import a data set using semantic import, and you get a, a really nice uh, data set format. So then it's quite trivial to, to do like things like date histogram on all the observation of spiders during the last year. I think that there was like a gap in May, I don't know why, but this was summer school <laughs> and some. <laughs> and yeah, also like things like uh, timeline plot with tooltip or, or labels of, of the images. I think this is like the first days during the summer school some of the people here helped me to find some of the spiders, jumping spiders. 
And then finally, let's go to uh, geographics. And obviously, my, my hometown is near Girona. So I uh, plotted all the different species I have been uh, finding during the last summer, I guess. And, but I will go back to the Dominican Republic ones because there are like several of them that I haven't been able to identify yet. And they might be like new species of spiders. And here I show also how to import the images from the image URL and have like a tooltip and, and see where the tarantulas are uh, and a jumping spider as well. And I think some of these are like unidentified yet. So if you, have, if you are a spider expert, you can come to me and help me define them. So let's get a closer look to at Pico Duarte. This is the highest mountain in the Caribbean. And yeah, you can also use different geo backgrounds like relief map to get a better picture of, of the hiking I was doing and the spiders uh, in the different uh, elevations of the mountain. I think this is a jumping spider eating a fly. All right, and I think it's not really visible, but here what, what I wanted to do is also to show that you can really get uh, a really nice uh, list plot 3D of, of, the, of the mountain itself. And I think it's, uh, it could be useful for, for identifying where the spiders live in which side of the mountain according to the sand, for example. So there are like a, a lot of possibilities using uh, all the world from language functionalities. Okay, how to convert the scientific name into an entity already existing in the world from language? Uh, using interpreter, for example, it's a good way. There are like certain species that are, are not in the database yet. Hopefully soon we can include uh, all, the, all the species that are, uh, are missing as entities. And, yeah, and some of them are, have like different names. They're, they exist, but for example, the genus change it over time and it, it's not there anymore. Yeah, more spiders for Halloween. <laughs> and yeah, you can see that like some of them were like not really interpreted or not in the system yet. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So let's go to uh, another platform that I have been using uh, for getting more information on, on, on species. It's the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. It's not a, an app like iNaturalist. It's more like a organization that collects data from different institutions included data from iNaturalist. And here you just have to log in uh, and, and create an account. It's, uh, it's for free. And then you are able also to download um, a lot of data from certain species or geographic locations and have like, in this case, I'm just gonna focus on, on one of the nudie branch that I was finding historically in Barcelona. Uh, it's called Sea Goddess Nudi Branch, Felimari Picta. And I'm showing how to also like uh, from the URLs from this data, database of observations to get to import the image. And also to import the, the data set on occurrences, which is um, can give you a list of the properties. They are similar to the natural properties, but I think in, in GBIF, there are like many more uh, uh, properties, like uh, institution, ID, and in some cases they have like DNA as well. But I'm, not, I'm gonna just focus on, on geolocations, uh, dates, and species name, and institutions in, in the following. For example, from the United uh, States National Museum, there are like several um, Felimare picta, this uh, sea slack on California, uh, no, this is Florida, sorry. And the same, I, I can do the same for, for Mediterranean Sea. I think it's quite small. 
and plot the different geomarkers with different colors depending on, on the, the institution. I think here the green ones are from a naturalist, and here's from a region of Spain, like uh, Valencia. I think it's like a university diving club uh, over there. The one I found is it's, it's in Barcelona, it should be like here, but it's still not, the data is still not in, in, the, uh, in the GBIF, it's uh, only in iNaturalist. A global map, so these species live all over the, the globe, almost. And just to compare that I, I could get uh, my image from the data, data set from iNaturalist from the same species. That's my, my photo underwater. Looks like a Pokemon, uh, like a Pikachu. <laughs> All right, uh, now I will start to, um, discussing about what platform is good for importing data about ecosystems, like uh, a food network of different species of animals or interactions between parasites or animals who eat other animals. In this case, I'm gonna use uh, the data from uh, global biotic interactions. And it was not that trivial to work with it because it's a nine gigabytes, uh, nine gigabytes uh, document. And you can get a, a lot of uh, relationships between different species. So here I'm just gonna give you uh, the URLs and, and a hint how to start working with it. I haven't worked much, I just have like um, function that which works somehow uh, to, to create such like graph of relationships between different species. And then uh, I'm just showing a, a, like a, a toy example on, on a graph, a foot, a foot web with different species and then do so per perform on, on top of it some, some graph uh, uh, functions, like for example, to use the, the, page, uh, the page rank centrality to, to get uh, the, the most important node on the graph and which species could disappear. Yeah, I think here I didn't know what was a ta tauhi, so I, I check it that it's, it's one, of the, one of these birds. And I think uh, Toshida realized that uh, this, uh, I think it's called laus, right? Uh, it's not really eating uh, sunflower. So this is really a toy example. Should be eating uh, blood, sucking blood from, from other animals. Um, yeah. All right, so I will start now the machine learning section. Uh, tools for identifying uh, these animals based on this data. Uh, first, I will start with this, the simple case using ImageIntify if it works perfect. If not, you have to go to more sophistic sophisticated methods like uh, neural networks and train your own neural networks with, you, with, with your data. In this case, I guess it's, it's kind of a bit of cheating here because I'm using the image from the from Wolfram and, and and then I'm trying to identify with image identify the same image. So probably it's already like it, it was used for training it. So it, it really gets that it, it's a, it's a bald eagle in this case. So there are like some limitations. This is also like a bald eagle, but flying looks like more like a vulture, and it it, it thinks the that it's a, a vulture and probably, but still I guess it's, it's a bird of prey. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some uh, example on training uh, your neural numbers with uh, images. That's, uh, or if you were in, in, in some of the sessions from machine learning team, this example uh, already existed with like three different kind of mushrooms and then uh, train it on, on this data. And this is like a toy example, but you could also import uh, data from three different species and identify it. Okay. So, also interesting uh, 
neural network that exists already in, in the neural network re repository. It's the, I, I will not pronounce all these <laughs> letters, but uh, uh, there's like a link here, and it's, uh, it's helping to kind of localize and, and put in the boxes different uh, animals or objects in, in, in the image. So in this case, I'm gonna show um, one easy example of there's like two birds, two different species of birds and one orange on a branch. And then using some um, tweaks on it, I'm able to kind of crop the different uh, birds from the image and then I can upload, in this case, I would be able to upload it for to, to my uh, iNaturalist account and get a new species without me uh, doing the, the whole process uh, of cropping the different species and then copying paste and so, yeah, and so that's, that was like an example that it only gets uh, one of the species I naturally used, so. Um, and here I think I will try to finish with the, a cool example on, on, on algae samples. Uh, last Sunday I was uh, walking around the area and, and I, I heard uh, an owl and I was recording with my iPhone this owl so I tried to, to discover what, what was the species of this uh, owl. And I don't know if there's like enough sound here, but let's try it. No, uh, it's not gonna work. But anyway, uh, it's a, an owl singing. Uh, you can use uh, Alliantify on animals. It says it's a bird, at least. Then you can perform a spectrogram with uh, male frequencies, and then also do some filtering to get a clear, a, a clear sound of the, um, of the owl sound. Singing, I think it was in front of the the football, the football stadium. Yeah. So then I, I look at the, in I naturally what are like the the main species in, in this area of owls. And it turns out that the, the, the two most common uh, owls are uh, the great hornet owl and the, the barret owl. I saw a barret owl in, in during the Wolfram Summer School in Boston, but I haven't heard uh, neither of them uh, singing, so I didn't know which, was, which one was it. And I think this is too small. So basically I'm gonna create two classes and import all the audios that I could, I could find in, in iNaturalist and then train a, a, a neural network on audio, perform a, a feature space plot to see if it's gonna be successful. From, from this case, it doesn't seem that it's that trivial that it will perform the job. But at the end, I was uh, training it and successfully uh, identify that it was uh, Bubu virginianus, that it's like the, the great hornet owl. And actually I got the confirmation by some biologist in the iNaturalist that that, it, that was the case. That's just to showcase an example. <laughs> and yeah, here there's like some, some links to other, um, Oh, oh. Yeah, some links to other resources for audios, not just iNaturalist, you can also get audios from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Shano Canto, it's also like a platform I was using back in 2015 during my summer school project with the help of Ricardo, porting uh, birds. And, and then the, there's also the, this built-in function called uh, Web Audio Search. It was not really working well for, for such owl species, but it works well for other animals, uh, more common ones. And then fi finally, oops, uh, I think uh, time is over. So um, should I 
try to finish that part. It's the, it's the last one. Basically, it's about geo visualizations, importing, in this case, all the owls observed in, in, in the state of Illinois. This is really small dots. But, uh, and then comparing, I was curious about if there, there was like some correlation on, on the owls observations and the, all the wind farms in the state of Illinois. But I think it's, there's not such a clear correlation. These are like the, a, a density, a geosmooth histogram on, on the distribution of wind, uh, wind farms. Uh, I was getting that idea from, from uh, a geographics uh, talk from Emmanuel Garces. And he's plotting the, the, the two days wind direction. I did not use the snow. But there's like kind of a mild correlation, but I think people, where people live, there are like more observations because this is Chicago. <laughs> and I don't believe that there are like many more owls in Chicago city than in other regions of, of uh, Illinois state. So yeah, I will just close uh, my talk with the future work that's need to be done. Maybe to integrate uh, iNaturalist API into the Wolfram language would be like super useful for, to get easily the data. It's quite easy now to get the data, but you have to go to the iNaturalist platform, uh, download the CSV file, and then use semantic import. And then maybe also uh, the global biotic interactions is quite interesting to see all the uh, networks interactions between species. Also for uh, biodiversity uh, studies and, and calculating bio biodiversity indices. Maybe integrating some biohabitats into geographics. I don't know if it, it already exists that or there's a plan for incorporating such data on different bio biomes like tundra or desert and all these. And finally, I want to thank uh, everyone who was also helping me to, to find species uh, during Wolfram Summer School. And yeah, raccoons do exist. <laughs> I found one last summer school, <laughs> Timothy. And, and yeah, and thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to try to upload the notebook, but it, right now it's like too big. <laughs> so that's like too, I have to take some data out. But yeah, feel free to um, contact me or. Do you have some question? Just time. yeah, but it's I'm a bit over of time. Yeah. For example, uh, each user has their, their their rights to to put what's the license that they are sharing the photos. For example, by default, I was not sharing uh, with. CC, like Creative Commons, or, or like there is a license that I actually is, uh, is allowed to share this information if they cite uh, all the data that is coming from the different users. Always the, the, at the end, you are, they're sharing also the, the observation, so it always pinpoints to the, the real user who was identifying that, that animal. But I changed my, my, my pre-settings on, on the observations and now my data is uh, it's going to be shared with uh, this other platform, the, the GBIF. And all that, there's like, I think I have like a, an image that I can show about the different licenses. This is, I think it's a naturalist. I can do it bigger. So in, in this case, uh, I think I'm using the third one. You can just no, no copyright and Someone can make money out of your pictures. <laughs> and I think the one by default, it's, it's this one. Uh, attribution, non-commercial, sh share alike. So yeah, I encourage you to open uh, iNaturalist account if you don't have it, and start um, collecting new data that can be then imported to Wolfram. <laughs> or, and there was like some other question, I think. One more question. Yeah. Why are you trying to 
because it's Halloween. Actu <laughs> no, uh, actually, have data from all kind of animals. Uh, the, in the Dominican Republic, for example, I, I saw a humpback whale as well. Uh, it's there in the data, but today I thought that just I would just focus on spiders because it, it, it's Halloween. Uh, also, because I have some. Uh, uh, when I was 17, I was collecting spiders from a natural park, and I found uh, one new species for Spain. Uh, I mean, for Spain, it was not discovered. There, there's no, I could not give a name to that spiders. And yeah, and, and there are several, at least two spiders called uh, something Mathematica. So I would be happy to look for them. One is in Australia, and the other, I don't know, where is it? So I don't know, it's a... Uh, I should put at the end, like, uh, looking for a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you.